Is it me, or does it always feel like when a game is massively hyped, it's almost guaranteed to fail? When you hear the famous phrase, it is a game of a generation, it never actually meets that standard, and it's either just a good game or just trash. Gamers like to do one of two things. We either enjoy hyping up projects in the hopes that it lands well, or just hope that it doesn't burn to ash. There have been many games and experiences burn, but none as severely as Cyberpunk 2077. Being one of the most hyped games in the last decade, everyone was betting that it would be an instant classic, or at least be game of the year. But no one in this God's green earth thought it would release as bad as this. Being nearly unplayable on last-gen consoles, causing PlayStation to remove it from its store, is pretty embarrassing. I honestly thought this was going to be the end. With stocks plummeting and the gaming press only getting worse, there was no redemption in sight. But somehow, someway, CD Projekt Red pulled this game from the ashes and brought it back to life. Even winning best ongoing game of 2023 at the Game Awards. How the hell did this happen? How was it possible to make this game a success after being so engulfed in crap. Well, Chooms, in order for us to fully understand this journey, I need to start where it all began. From the moment the hype started to Keanu Reeves stepping out on stage, to its dog shit release and its eventual redemption arc. Now, let me be clear. This is not a declaration that Cyberpunk is a perfect game, even after all these fixes, but it's more of an analysis of the journey of this title and how it started as the epitome of crap that we hate to see from game developers to redeeming themselves to a certain degree and actually being chosen by the fans as a success. And my hope is that by learning the story of Cyberpunk 2077, maybe, just maybe, future developers will not make the same mistake again. So gather around the fire, pour one out for your homie Jackie Wells, and let's reminisce of the story of Cyberpunk 2077. Just like any story, we need to have our main character. Wait, you, you don't know him? Well, this man is Mike Pondsmith. He was the original creator of Cyberpunk World, which was actually envisioned in a tabletop game similar to that what we see in D&D. Back in 1990, he released Cyberpunk 2020, which created a unique world revolving around Night City, which essentially was in between San Francisco and Los Angeles. The city itself is a neon-lit dystopian metropolis set in a futuristic, dark, and gritty environment similar to the movies like Blade Runner and Robocop. Now everyone loves themselves some futuristic messed up stories. I mean, that was essentially the entire lineup for the 80s films throughout that entire decade. In May of 2012, the same year when we were graced with ultimate successes, such as the PlayStation Vita and the Wii U, CD Projekt Red held their group summer conference. Back when CDPR was releasing massive hits in the Witcher series and considered to be the apex developer in the gaming space. At this conference, they were discussing news and announcements for the future and laying down the hammer that they were just reached 1.7 million games sold for The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings. Let's just say they were living the highlight. After patting themselves on the ass, they actually made a very surprising announcement. CDPR is creating a new RPG game that's not The Witcher? Well, but what about my boy Geralt? An entire separate team of devs that worked on previous installments are now tasked with creating a whole new game in the world of Cyberpunk in collaboration with your boy Mike Pondsmith. Promise to be a realistic, brutal, non-linear story with advanced RPG mechanics based on a class system. Now, I gotta say right off the bat, you already know there is going to be hype behind this project. Whether you are a fan of Cyberpunk pen and paper series or you're a fan of The Witcher, you already know that they're going to deliver something amazing. January 10th, 2013, we get our first trailer. It features a cybernetic woman that seems to have cut some random people up just chopping them to pieces over here. My boy's, my boy's kind of hurt. And she's getting shot at by officers and eventually is put down by a cybernetic commander with the trailer showing the official title of the game, Cyberpunk 2077. With no real answers or info about what any of this crap means, fans are legit left with cybernetic blue balls. And those blue balls only got bluer. From 2013 to 2018, we basically get zero information about the game. And anytime fans or media ask CDPR about the project itself, it's almost like the game doesn't even exist. It's like we're trying to find Voldemort. I mean, you can understand the secrecy, especially because most of the studio was off making the greatest game ever invented. So for us fans, we were just fine with not hearing much news about Cyberpunk. 
especially because The Witcher's main story was getting its conclusion and should be taking the priority anyway. Then on June 10th, 2018, at the E3 conference, I mean, I miss E3, we get some official news on Cyberpunk, a brand new cinematic trailer that gives us a narrative of the main character with a bunch of cutscenes showing off the world of Night City and some possible conflicts and events that we could see in the game. Riding a metro system, gang fights, hacking, stealing, it just comes off as more brutal version of GTA. This trailer just slaps, and you can tell that if the game can do what this trailer is showing off, then it's going to be a badass experience. And from here on out, we are getting constant news and speculation about the game. I mean, when you look at the journey of Cyberpunk, especially in the time before it released, CDPR seemed like they were doing everything right. They gave us some really interesting trailers, they gave us characters that looked unique, hell, we even got Keanu Reeves! We got the we got the guy from Matrix. I know that I might be sounding like a homer here and I, maybe I'm a little too excited, but when it comes to game development and how developers show off their work that they're producing, CDBR was showing us a lot of content on a daily basis and we're getting trailers yearly. And it, all of this would just give us hope that this would just be a sick experience. Everything was going well until 2020. <laughs> It's officially the year of Cyberpunk 2077, and all you heard about anywhere in gaming is that Cyberpunk will be the greatest game ever released. Unfortunately, right as we jump into the new year, we get some troubling news. Apparently, developer crunch is at an all-time high, to the point where devs are leaking to the media that the corporal bosses over at CDPR are grinding their ass to dust trying to finish this game on time. On January 17th, CDPR made the tough decision to delay the game to September 17th of that year in order to give the game more polish, but stated to investors that the game is complete and is playable, but just wanted the time to make sure it's at its best. But there's something that's really troubling me. At that same announcement, the studio also stated that Cyberpunk multiplayer will not be released until 2022, two years after the release of the main game. If that doesn't ring alarm bells in your ear, then I don't know what the hell will. I mean, if we're using Rockstar time, then I mean, that's that's pretty much normal, but not for CD Projekt Red. They, they never did this. In that summer during the E3 conference, we got hit right in the nuts again with another delay pushing the game to November. Each delay causes the fans to get nervous as we eventually get more details about the game. What helps ease the pain is that all these new trailers that they were showing us were absolutely stunning. They are giving us information about the skill system, and some things about the story. I mean, this all was great, but in the background at CDPR, it's getting much, much worse. We were essentially left in the dark as to why these delays were happening, and compared to the past, we actually started to get less updates about the progress of the game and everything we did here was just getting more and more negative. But by the fall, we were getting anxious, and with another delay pushing the game's release to December 10th, boy, I was hella nervous. We just want to see this project that we are promised since 2012. It's been more than eight years since we first were announced about this title. We just want to see it released. We were given some information about the game, discussing Johnny Silverhand and some of the backstory universe, which got us excited to play. And with the gaming media finally getting access to the game, we were waiting to see if any of the things that they were playing were fun. And the time has come. December 8th, the review embargo release for Cyberpunk. Oh God, what are, what are those media saying? Are they, is it bad? Is it good? And for the most part, the gaming media loved it. Getting favorable review from most critics, hitting around 86 on Metacritic, generally a solid performance on PC and next-gen consoles. So with this news, most fans, including myself, were just excited to jump into Night City, and with all these fears basically gone, it's time to play, baby. On release day, all that excitement turned into straight-up disgust. I never wanted to slam my controller into the ground as hard, but I already know this control would break if I even attempted to touch it too hard. CDPR did one of the scummiest corpo moves I've ever seen. If you're playing Cyberpunk on a PC, Xbox Series X, or PlayStation 5, you relatively had a limited number of bugs that didn't destroy your experience, but can be seen as annoying. But if you're playing this game on the Xbox One or PlayStation 4, this crap was unplayable. You were basically seeing the most disturbing things I've ever seen in a video game before. To say this game was buggy would be an understatement. It was almost like we were transferred back in time and we were playing on the Sega Genesis with how bad the performance issues were. Rendering any sort of a scene was a chore, driving a car would break the entire experience, sending you beneath the map, and there were literally spots in the game that if you were to climb or touch a part of the wall, 
you'd be sent to the Shadow Realm, straight up teleporting to an entirely new part of the map. There are areas of Night City that were blocked off due to the inability for the devs to finish the game completely, with the promise that they would add these areas in later. How the hell did this happen? Did the reviewers see this? Well, according to media sites like IGN and others, they were only given access to the PC version of the game before launch, which was way better. So all the reviews were positive because they were the less broken version of the game. CDPR was hoping that fans would just buy the game, secure those eddies, and that they would still make money in the end. This is one of the most shady Scrooge McDuck things I've ever seen. Knowing full well that the fans were going to be completely outraged and still try to sell this as a complete and not broken game is just sad. Now I realize that they were trying to save their ass with their investors by dropping Cyberpunk for the holiday sales, but in the long run, their investors straight up sold their stock and left them in the dust. It's ironic. The devs launched their apology tour and promised to fix the game, but the damage was already done. CDPR had refunded everyone who asked for their money back. Sony took Cyberpunk off its official store until it passed its quality control tests. But worst of all, their reputation for being the apex of gaming is completely gone. They were no longer the devs that always delivered and became just like every other corporate developer in this era of modern gaming. So at this point in time, CDPR basically just got dumped on their chest and they have one or two options that they could take going forward. They could either one, ditch the game completely running like a bitch and start working on their next project in the hopes that this entire event would just be erased from the minds of everyone around them, also known as the Bioware Men. Or they could stay and try to fix the game, an attempt at fixing their reputation. Now, most game developers I know nowadays would most likely turn and run as fast as humanly possible, or pretend they have nothing to fix, just like how I look at Activision every year. But CD Projekt Red did the unthinkable. They declared that they will be fighting to keep Cyberpunk around for a long time and calling 2021 their start of their redemption story. Most people honestly thought it was a joke. I was hoping that they could pull it off, but honestly, I felt like it was a lost cause. CDPR created a roadmap of patches, DLCs, and news to make the game fun and enjoyable for years. Not saying it forgives them for what they did, but I have to give them credit that they actually made it a goal to fix the game and to stick around. But let's be real, how the hell do you fix this? CDPR has set a goal in their minds that 2021 would be the year to create a fresh start for the game, as well as make the game feel complete so that fans will feel as though their money was worth it. Or better yet, that if they were to repurchase the game again, that they would actually see that they're progressing. They would need to pull their heads out of their ass completely and start making some real changes. Now, I'll be pretty blunt with you. There were some things they added to try to fix the glitches of the game first. The first real attempt happened with major update of 1.2, which arrived roughly in that March of 2021, a few months after the original start. Now, in the beginning, their mission was straight up simple. Make the game not complete trash and just make it playable for all consoles rather than prioritize the next gen consoles only. The biggest fixes came with the broken police force because before this update, they were complete trash. They either popped out of nowhere where like they knew the instant transmission technique. Relatively update did fix most of the game breaking bugs and problems that plagued the game from the beginning. I no longer teleport to hell when driving a vehicle, which is definitely a great thing to see, but this wasn't enough to really get a big push from the overall audience. I did stream it a few times to see whether it was completely broken still or not. And yeah, it was fun, but it really wasn't anything to look back at. Along the way, we did continue to get little updates to adjust some of the growing pain, like the 1.3 updated drop in September of that year, but it sort of just fixed basic issues. The next gen refresh did make some buzz in February of 2022. This definitely brought out the power of the next gen consoles where we saw a full use of 4K scaling, 60 FPS gameplay, and even removed the Sega Genesis mode that made Cyberpunk amazing. I mean, damn it, that was one hot ass bouncer. I do reminisce about those old timey video games though. I didn't know Cyberpunk had an N64 mode. And CDPR did a smart move by giving players who had never experienced the game before a free trial of the game for an entire month to try to get them to experience and see what they have done so far in this game. People love to see free stuff, so that always does help. This was one of the first times where gamers felt like it might actually be worth jumping into the game and see what they've been cooking this entire time. There was a slight boost in players that felt like the devs really were trying to make things work with even how crappy this launch was. But CDPR needs outside help to get fans hooked again. And no one, including myself, expected that that help would come from Netflix. 
are heading into the summer of 2022, we had remembered that there would be some sort of anime cyberpunk project releasing on Netflix in the fall. Now, I don't know about you, but I have done many deep dives into game adaptations, and up to this point, I have only seen maybe a few that actually did well. Most times, they are complete money grab projects that half the time fail or just make you sick to your stomach. I mean, as long as you don't get to levels of like the Halo show or, or maybe Resident Evil, then maybe it can't be a complete failure. And in all honesty, I had completely forgot that Edge Runners was actually releasing. I thought it was honestly a joke at first. I mean, I love me some anime, but just felt like Cyberpunk had such a bad experience up to this point. And when I heard that it was a completely different story, I honestly thought it would be a complete flop. And as we get closer to release, it was announced that it will encompass the world of Night City prior to the events of the game and dive into aspects of the lore that were not really focused on on much of the entire game of Cyberpunk 2077. And once once it drops, I was pleasantly surprised. Edge Owners did exactly what you would want in a video game adaptation. It dove into the story of David Martinez, a school dropout that is fairly accustomed to cybernetics. After some pretty messed up events, it causes him to join the Edge Runner, who are basically a gang of mercs doing missions for hire and just trying to make it in the world. Every character in the story is unique and it creates the family dynamic that David never really had. I'm not going to go full spoiler mode here, so please don't kill me. But one thing I will say is that this plot is awesome and it's messed up. I mean, think about what was invested in the show to see how much CDPR was hoping this would bring excitement to the game in the long run. Freaking John Carlo Esposito was part of the story. But I think the most important reason this worked well for CDPR was really for two reasons. Firstly, this show expanded in the universe of Night City. Every part of the show can be traced to the game and actually be revisited during playing the actual title itself. Diving to the story of cyber psychosis and the fight to stay human in this future filled with an emphasis on cyberware, which honestly was never really touched upon in the main game. But most of all, the story mirrors the narrative of cyber Cyberpunk. The main protagonist, whether it's V or David, want to reach the mountaintop for similar reasons, either to avenge those lost or to provide for people around them. So when seeing this story do so well, whether you're a fan of Cyberpunk or not, you took notice and want to see what's the smoke. Secondly, CDPR did a smart move. They actually added an update to the game that, that mirrored all the equipment and art styles that we saw from the show directly into the game. So you can essentially recreate characters and be as identical to them as humanly possible. It was honestly a perfect storm. Fans of the show made in an effort to buy the game and see whether it matched the same level and it was such a big brain move by cdpr to pull this off if you never played cyberpunk before but watched edge runners it honestly makes the experience way better don't believe the edge runners helped other than getting the dweebs on their side in the first week the show debuted in the top 10 of netflix with 14.88 million hours viewed. And in that same week, we saw milestones for Cyberpunk, hitting sales to over 20 million units. People were coming back to the game and wanted to experience Cyberpunk with an entirely new perspective and all of a sudden, the overall perception of the game started to change. More people started to appreciate the lore and how far CDPR has come to fix the title since it had its Garbo-styled launch. We were well into the redemption arc, but there needed to be one final push. Ever since the fall of 2022, we were given insights on the first major expansion of Cyberpunk 2077 called Phantom Liberty. It was relatively unknown what the story would be until we got to see a narrative trailer shown at the summer showcases in June of 2023. Now, I gotta say, this, this story did intrigue me when it was first discussed. So it wasn't going to be a continuation of the story past the end game, but it would actually add an area of the map that was originally cut from the main title known as Dogtown. It would be a $30 DLC that added 15 hours of story content with even more fixes or adjustments to the game. This would be considered the re-release of Cyberpunk that included major expansions to the map, but gave us revamped aspects of the entire experience. Like when you look at the changes, it honestly is surprising this was only $30, especially when we're getting charged $70 every year for games like Call of Duty or Madden that provide less content and are more trash. We gained a whole new skill tree system that was way more varied compared to what it was before. We can actually shoot guns from our cars now? Wait, I mean, seriously? I mean, this changes everything. I actually forgot that we could never actually do that before. Damn, this game started like crap. Hell, we can finally ride a damn train, which was supposed to be in the game since day one. You can finally experience the intense, mega adrenaline field gameplay that we wanted all along. I mean, jokes aside, playing this expansion from the start of the game and getting there naturally 
actually feels like a perfect experience. A new area, weapons, customization, and story. Now that's what I call a bargain. What makes the 2.0 update a real game changer is that we finally have what it seems to be a complete game and with the inclusion of a new story narrative, it honestly fulfills the promise that was made back in 2021. The story expansion is considered a masterpiece of storytelling with many twists and some really cool moments throughout. I just feel like this expansion is symbolic for what the game has gone through since it was first released. With the critics loving the experience, they awarded Cyberpunk 2077 the best ongoing game of 2023 for the overall experience, which I do need to give them kudos for. I've already beaten Cyberpunk 2077 before, but I am very pleased with the fact that I jumped back into the game to experience this re-release for myself. Seeing the journey of Cyberpunk 2077, it is honestly crazy to see where this game started to where it is today. I will never forget how much excitement this game had leading up to its release and the absolute vitriol when it was absolutely broken. The game legit became an absolute meme and it was honestly hilarious watching the various clips of the game just breaking completely. But one thing that always surprised me through it all was that people still love the universe and mystique of it all. People just wanted to hang out with Johnny Silverhand. Throughout the whole journey, I always saw so many gamers coming out to support the game, hoping for its comeback to actually happen. I would stream the game and random people would just tune in to see if it was actually fixed or if they're still T-posing. I hadn't played through the entire game when it first released and I really did enjoy my experience. The story was pretty good, but I felt like the world is what made the game fun. But with the re-release of the game being official and Phantom Liberty expansion being as successful as it was, kind of seems like we can declare that Cyberpunk 2077 officially made its comeback. May the story of Cyberpunk 2077 be an example for future Future projects that attempt to release a broken or unfinished game. I will always think back to Miyamoto's quote, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. CD Projekt Red felt the impact of making this bad decision, and even if CDPR may not have redeemed themselves completely, they have at least stayed true to their promise of making this game playable for years to come. Do you think Cyberpunk 2077 has officially made its comeback? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like the premium content, drop a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, Chooms, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.